In today's video, we're going to look at one of the most important tools for improving communication in your relationship. These are I statements. We're going to look at what I statements are, how to make them, and importantly, how to really mean them. Now, great communication is one of the most important ingredients in a healthy relationship. And it's especially vital when we're having disagreements conflicts or even arguments. Even if we just need to tell someone something that we don't think they're going to like very much, there are great and not so great ways to talk about it. So the good news is that conflict and disagreements can actually help us to build a stronger relationship if we handle them well. So by the end of this video, you're going to have all the skills that you need to approach arguments in a healthy, constructive way. And that's great. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well to make sure that you don't miss any of the other great advice that you need to have a fantastic, healthy relationship. Let's start by talking about what I statements are and what the alternative is. I statements pretty much do what they say on the tin. They are phrases that start with the words, I feel, and they describe your experiences, your perception, your feelings, and they're there to allow your partner to really understand what's going on for you. So they allow you to frame any problems that you're experiencing in terms of how things have affected you personally without putting any kind of blame onto the other person. The important thing about an I statement is that you're not talking about cause or blame or this is why, you, you know, th this is what you were thinking. You're not talking about the other person's experience at all because you don't know for sure what the other person's experience is. What you're doing is offering them a chance to understand your experience because that's the part that you're an expert in. So what happens if you don't use I statements? Well, if you don't use I statements, you're probably left with the opposite, which is a you statement. So this is when you tell someone what's wrong in your relationship or what's going on with a problem that you've got by describing their actions. Sometimes you might even describe their intentions and their thought processes, even though you actually only have your own perception of what that is, and you don't know for definite that that's what's going on. So what are I statements there to achieve? Well, they're there to help you solve problems because the instant you tell somebody else that they are the problem, their immediate response is going to be, I'm not. They become defensive. Whereas when you start using an I statement, it's very hard to become as defensive when someone says, I feel hurt when this happens, because they're saying, I feel hurt. They're not actually saying that you've done anything wrong, so there's nothing to defend yourself against. Now, although an I statement is about solving problems, let's not pretend that we're not trying to change someone's behavior. So it's not manipulative. We're being completely open about the fact that there is a problem and something needs to change, but we are trying to change someone else's behavior. And we might even have to change our own behavior, but something is trying to change. Now, an I statement will enable the other person to hear what we have to say. As I've mentioned, it stops them getting defensive and that allows them to really pay attention. Because when you're having an argument and you're feeling attacked, what happens is that you spend the time that your partner is talking and explaining their perception of everything and you're going, well, I need to tell them this and I need to explain that I didn't do this. And so you're busy putting together your defense rather than listening and engaging. So using I statements makes it easier for your partner to hear the things that you need them to understand. They also let you talk about your feelings really, really openly. 
and that allows you to understand each other better. I statements are also a great way to sidestep the perception that you're nagging. So when you nag someone, you're constantly focusing on their behavior and they get frustrated by that. Now, whether that's justified or not really does depend on the situation. Sometimes some people just need a bit of a good nag, but it's actually not very effective. Using an I statement allows you to get better results and not be accused of nagging, which is frankly great. And I statements allow you to work with your partner to explore what's going on and that makes it a lot easier for you to really understand the deeper roots of any of the problems that you guys are facing. Now that you understand what an I statement does, you hopefully realize why they are so helpful and so valuable, especially during arguments. So how do you construct a great I statement? Well, the first thing you need to do is work out what you're actually feeling, because there's no way that you're going to be able to communicate honestly and effectively to your partner what's going on if you haven't spent some time working out exactly what you feel. So you might start out by thinking, well, I get really angry when you leave your clothes on the floor and don't put them in the laundry hamper. Okay, but what does that anger represent? What's going on for you with that anger? Well, quite often that anger actually boils down to a feeling of being disrespected and you, you feel disrespected and you feel like you have to fight for respect and that's what triggers the anger. So once you understand what you're actually feeling, it's going to be so much easier for you to explain your I statement because your I statement will go from, I become angry when you do this to, I feel disrespected when this happens. And that's a much more accurate and useful I statement than the first one. The next thing is that you do need to describe the behavior that's causing the problem, but you need to do it again in a way that doesn't assign blame. So you might say something along the lines of, I feel really frustrated when I see clothes on the floor rather than in the hamper. So again, you're not using the word you. It's not, I feel really disrespected when you dump your clothes there, even though I've asked you a million times not to. This may have been a personal experience for me. It becomes, I see them and therefore I, and I get this feeling. I get this emotional response to what I see. And so you've described the behavior or the outcome, but without making the other person feel like they are being criticized. And that's also really useful because quite often when we criticize people, we start criticizing their character or it feels to them like their character is being criticized rather than their behavior. So it's really tempting to say something like, you're so lazy, you can't even be bothered to put your clothes in the hamper. But do we really know that they're lazy? And is it helping? Telling someone that they're lazy isn't certainly isn't describing the behavior. So we want to be really clear to describe the behavior clearly and in a way that avoids as much blame as possible. And then you need to talk about the effect that this behavior has on you. So in the case of laundry, you might say, I then have to go around and pick it up and I get frustrated. It puts me in a bad mood. I'm then in a bad mood for the rest of the day. You'll notice that I'm trying really hard not to say you put me in a bad mood. There is a huge amount of an I statement that's about taking responsibility for your own feelings. So in an ideal world, you wouldn't say it makes me angry or when I see that, it puts me in a bad mood. Ideally, you'd say, okay, when I see this, I end up in a bad mood. So you're not saying this happened and my bad mood, I'm just a passive observer. You know, I'm a passenger, suddenly this thing happens and my bad mood is inevitable because it isn't. You do have a choice in how you react and showing that you understand that 
is actually a key part of how you make a really good I statement. So trying to talk about the effect that the behavior or that the problem has on you without being too kind of aggressive or without saying that it's their fault is going to be hugely important. You also need to be vulnerable. So you need to be open about the fact that sometimes this thing, it just hurts. I don't know why it hurts. It just hurts me. And I have all these vulnerable feelings and you might not want to admit that, but actually it helps. So coming back to our example of laundry on the floor, it might be that I'd say, okay, well, when I see this laundry on the floor, it makes me feel unimportant and worthless. And it makes me question what I actually bring to this relationship because then I feel like all I'm doing is being a maid and not an equal partner. And that fit, that fits in with something that I worry about regularly, which is, am I actually carrying my own weight in the relationship? And do you see me as an equal? So that's a really vulnerable way of opening up. And you can see how, if you heard your partner say that, it would hopefully lead to a huge amount of empathy and a desire to work through things. Because it's very clear that under those circumstances, what I just said, I'm not blaming them. I'm saying, this is hitting one of my insecurities. Please help me with it. Please can we work together so that we can find a solution that works for both of us. Having said that, you do also need to be a little bit assertive. So you're not trying to minimize the effect that things have on you. That's really important. As women, we're quite often taught that, oh no, it, it's not a big deal, but could you just? Yeah. When you're making I statements, you're trying to help someone to understand you. And so try to make sure that you don't minimize your feelings because that's actually getting in the way of you being properly understood. Now, how can you mean your I statements? Well, this is something that doesn't really get talked about enough. As I've mentioned, I statements are about taking responsibility for your feelings and for your actions. They work because you're not blaming the other person for what you're feeling. You've decided to describe how you feel rather than throwing blame around. And that's really good and really important. And it's gonna lead you to having a better relationship. But the trouble with that is that you need to do it authentically. You can't just use magic words and a specific sentence structure to make it seem as though you're taking responsibility for your own feelings. You need to actually do it. And that's a little bit harder. So how can you go about that? Well, the first thing is that you need to genuinely make space for them to respond. So when you make your I statements, don't go in there with a list of these are th these are the things that he needs to say in order to make it all okay again. You need to genuinely be curious. You need to genuinely want your partner to engage in this as an equal partner. So if you're not throwing blame around, that's great. But that also means that they don't have to accept the blame. If you're taking responsibility for yourself, and your behavior and your feelings, you also need to be keen to hear from your partner's perspective. You'll also need to take the time to really understand that you actually do have control over your own emotions and specifically that your emotional reactions are partially a choice. Some of your emotions are simply reactions, but we're capable of so much more than that. So when someone makes us angry, what we're actually saying is that we've had an angry response to that event. That's a much more responsible and accountable way of thinking and speaking about our own emotions. So it's worth being careful about how you speak to yourself about your emotions. That's probably the biggest thing that you can do 
to change how much accountability you take for your own emotional reactions. When you hear yourself in your own internal monologue saying, well, he made me angry or, well, they made me feel, try to stop and remind yourself, no, that is the reaction that I had but it isn't inevitable. And that's just a really useful step to get you used to taking accountability. You can also try to understand that setting boundaries in your relationship is your responsibility. This makes it a lot easier for you to see all of these discussions as being a joint effort. Both of you need to work on your behavior, both of you need to find ways to compromise, and both of you need to find boundaries that work for you both and respect the other person's boundaries. The other person might need to change what they're doing. They might need to actually put their own laundry in the hamper. I'm really stuck on this one today. But you might also need to do better at enforcing your boundaries. And so both of you are working together to make a much better relationship in the long run. Also really important, as I've already mentioned, to be really, really curious about what's going on for your partner. The more you are genuinely interested and curious and inquisitive about how your partner feels, the safer they're going to feel to open up about how they see any of these situations. Remember that you don't know what's going on inside their head. It might sometimes feel like you do, and you might feel like they're an open book, but actually being a little bit humble and being aware that you could be wrong can go a very long way. Final thing you can do is just to practice. Taking responsibility and thinking about your emotions and your reactions in a different way and communicating through I statements doesn't come naturally to many of us, to be perfectly honest. And it's okay if it takes you a little bit of time to work out how you're going to approach conversations in this way. It's worth the effort. So hopefully now you feel a little bit more comfortable with using I statements. You'll also probably find that you're a lot more effective when they reflect a genuine sense of responsibility and accountability on your part. How about you? Do you use I statements? Do they work well for you? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.